New Lenox Library, it's Kelly Jean with Adult and Teen Services bringing you another pop-up program. Around this time of year, many of you may be buying or receiving flowers, but if you're anything like me, you might not have a vase to put them in. So today we're going to show you how to make a beautiful floral arrangement at home, even if you don't have a vase. And by the end of this video, you should be able to make a floral arrangement out of just about anything. As I mentioned, I don't always have a vase available, but something I do always have is glassware. This is a great option for anything that's got a shorter stem or might be a, a larger bloom on its own. It's also a good option for buds. Uh, so we're gonna start with a larger bloom. This one is a Gerber Daisy, and I've put that in a heavy bottomed cocktail glass, but this would do good in just about any drinking glass, so long as the width of the glass is a little bit smaller than the head of the flower here. Now, of course, you can always go the opposite direction and get a glass that is purposely larger than the bloom. So this is a martini glass, and this flower sits a little bit deeper in there, and you get this beautiful side view, and we're drawing up the eye with the height here by adding on a hydrangea leaf in addition to the leaf that it comes with. But this last one is a personal favorite, and that is to use a shot glass. This is gorgeous for spray roses or buds. Uh, this is also a really great option if you have a larger bouquet or flower arrangement and something snaps off and the stem gets a little too short. Uh, this is a great way to display that as well. But if all of the, the glasses in your kitchen are occupied, some other options might be to grab something from the recycling, like a tin soup can or vegetable can. These can look nice on their own, or you can spray paint them, throw a ribbon around it. And of course, similarly, glass jars, especially mason jars, are beloved for weddings. They're a nice rustic look. Uh, and these are really nice as we're getting into spring. They're a little bit more organic. One of the things I like about using glasses is that you get all of this visual interest from the side because you're able to see the stems. It's a little bit different than a ceramic, but you could also use a teacup or a ramekin if you wanted something that's, again, going to be a little bit more shallow. But let's be honest, around Valentine's Day, people aren't usually getting these single blossoms. They're usually getting larger arrangements and bouquets. So the next thing we're going to do is show you how to arrange those at home. When we're dealing with a larger bouquet or arrangement, but we don't have a vase, the first thing we wanna do is identify what else in our house we might have that's kind of vase-like or vase-adjacent. So for me, I have this beautiful pitcher right here, which I'm going to use as my vase. Uh, now, of course, I could just put my flowers right in here, but here's another little trick if you wanna do something a little bit more fancy. And all that's gonna take is a roll of masking tape. So I'm gonna make a little grid here to help give me some guidelines of how to arrange my flowers by making strips going one way and then the other. Now with mine, I have, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna do about three stripes in one direction and three strips the other way. But it's really gonna depend on your vessel. So I'm just tucking them a little bit into the top, so not quite exactly straight across. If you have a lot of large blooms that are gonna kinda of hang over or some foliage, you can go right over the top. You don't have to worry about tucking it in. I'm just trying to evenly space that here. And now I'm gonna go the other way. All right, so it's gonna look like that. That's just giving me guidelines. So once that's prepped, I'm just gonna set it to the side for now, and I'm gonna work on prepping our flowers. So we're gonna work with three types of flowers today, or three categories, I should say. The first one is our showstoppers, our big blooms. The next one is going to be our secondary flowers here. So I've got some spray roses and some mini carnations. And then the third type would be filler and texture. So I've got some baby's breath. I've got some of this. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's real pretty. And then the other thing that I've done for texture is on some of the flowers I've already prepped, I've just kept the stem and the leaf, so I have that as an option too. 
The next thing you want to do is trim your stems down and you want to cut them at an angle. Now ideally what you want to use is uh, some gardening shears, but my guess is if you don't have a vase, you might not have those either. So I'm just using regular scissors here. Kitchen shears are also a good option. Um, you want to make sure that you're cutting at an angle. And a good rule of thumb is you want to leave about an inch and a half or so above your vessel. And keep in mind that you can always cut more, but you can't add it back. So you can always take away more. So I tend to err on the side of a little bit more than that. So once again, we're cutting at an angle. And then I'm also just gonna do a quick cut up the stem just to encourage it to take a good drink here. All right, and once you do that with all your flowers, anything that's got a got some leaves on it, you just wanna make sure that you strip off the leaves from lower on the stem, anywhere that would be beneath the water line because that can encourage bacteria, which is gonna make your flowers die faster. And nobody wants that. So we've got our pitcher prepped, we've got our flowers prepped, now we're going to go ahead and get started with the arranging. Now our visual tip is that we like things in groupings of odd numbers. So ones, threes, and fives tend to be the things that our eyes are more attracted to. But there are always exceptions to that rule, uh, so just keep that in mind when you're doing some groupings. We're going to start with our showstoppers here. And I'm just gonna arrange those towards the center. It's a little taller than I want, so I'm gonna cut it down again. There we are. Next, we're gonna go to our secondary flowers and kind of add it in around there. We also wanna think about the way that our arrangement is going to look from the front and the back. So I'm kind of working out in a spiral here. I've got my big flowers in the center, got my secondary ones out here, and then I'm gonna do some more with my filler and my texture as I get more out of it. I actually decided that this is a little taller than I want to, so I'm gonna take it back out and make an adjustment. Flower arranging is an art and not a science, so it's gonna depend on what you have and your own personal taste. I happen to like this a little bit better. I'm going to cut that down just a touch. Not too much. Keeping in mind that grouping of three. So I've got three blooms. I'm just going to tuck that in. Now the masking tape is keeping that nice and sturdy, keeping it from flopping over. Got to make sure that my stems are always reaching the water. All right, so I got some different heights going on here. Now I'm gonna start adding some of my filler and my texture. The important thing to remember is that it's a process. So again, don't feel bad about moving things around, taking things out, cutting them. And make sure you are still turning the vase around a little bit. And there we have it. That is my completed flower arrangement. I like my arrangements to be a little bit more organic and wild, so that's why I have all this height. Uh, and yours might look a little bit different depending on your preference, but this is what I like. I've checked that I enjoy it from all angles, so I am pleased with my final arrangement. Using those techniques, you can make a beautiful arrangement at home, even if you don't have a vase, using just about anything, and I'm going to prove it. So, so far we've seen glassware and a pitcher. Uh, so I use the same technique as the pitcher to make an arrangement from this soup terrine. So it's a totally different dish. This usually just sits on our china cabinet, doesn't get a lot of use, so this is a great way for it to come out to display. So I started with our one, three, five rule, and I started with my five big blooms, worked my way out with secondary flowers, then used all of my filler, including my tip to save some of the stems and leaves from other things I cut in order to add some extra visual interest. So you really can make an arrangement at home, no matter what you have, whether it's a pitcher, a soup tureen, a bottle, whatever this is, or even a boot. 
So we hope today that you learned some tips and tricks to arrange flowers in your own home. And if you did so, make sure to share it with us. Have a wonderful rest of your day.